Every year there's always at least one game that takes me completely by surprise in the best way possible. Dusk Diver is a game I knew would be up my alley, but one I didn't expect to love as much as I have. Its mix of stylish combat and city exploration gameplay had me completely enamored. Dusk Diver is an absolute blast and without a doubt 2019's must play hidden gem. Dusk Diver's story is set in Taipei's Jimending Shopping District, a location that very few if any games have taken place in. Jimending has been lovingly recreated with amazing detail, including real-life locations like Coldstone Creamery. No, I'm not kidding. You play a 16-year-old Yang Yuna whose everyday shopping trip with a friend turns into an unexpected adventure. Yuna is transported to an alternate version of Jimending where strange creatures attack her and threaten to invade her world. After being granted powers by a man named Leo and a talking ceramic bear simply known as Boss, Yuno is tasked with finding the source of these dimensional fissures and defending the city from invading monsters. More than anything, the story is used as a vehicle to move between different gameplay segments. It's not particularly compelling or well told in any way. There's a few funny moments between characters here and there, but they're more caricatures than characters. One interesting thing of note is that the audio is available in both Japanese and Chinese as Dusk Diver was developed in Taiwan by Jera and JFI Games. Dusk Diver is like if you took Bayonetta and mashed it together with Persona, but with a much smaller budget. The majority of the time you'll be brawling your way through dungeons, with the rest of your time being spent exploring and taking part in activities all across town. The combat is an exhilarating pleasure. It feels familiar to something you might find in a Platinum Games title, including slowing down enemies with a well-timed dodge. Admittedly, Dust Diver doesn't have the variety of something like Bayonetta 2, but considering its budget, what's on display is impressive. You have light and heavy attacks, as well as three different guardians you can summon throughout battles. Leo has slow, hard-hitting attacks that break down shields, Behet has a large scythe that's great for taking out groups of enemies, and Viata has an arsenal of guns and bombs that are effective at doing both. The combat starts off quite simple, and you might not think it has much to offer, but as you level up Yuno and her three guardians, that's when Dusk Diver truly shines. Its depth slowly reveals itself as you start experimenting and finding creative ways to start stringing together long combos. Additionally, if Yuno collects enough golden orbs, she can transform into a powered up state and dish out big damage. Dusk Diver's combat has a lot of layers to peel away, and the more you engage with the game's various systems, the deeper it becomes. There are also platforming segments in the dungeons that are admittedly not great, but are thankfully if frequent enough to not be a real bother. When you're not battling your way through dungeons, you're free to explore Jimending and partake in its bevy of side activities. One series of quests has you reuniting five brothers to share in their love of superheroes closely resembling the Power Rangers, with the rewards being costumes you and each of your guardians can wear. Not all side quests are equally as interesting, but each serve as a great excuse to explore every corner of the city. Street food also plays a big part in Dusk Diver, as each one gives you a different kind of buff in battle, and if you become a frequent enough customer, you'll be duly rewarded. Other activities include going to the movies, working at a convenience store, and buying prizes from gacha machines that include concept art and costumes. These all felt like clever ways to blend gameplay with things you would find in the real life G-Men Ding. To say the least, there is a ton to keep you busy in Dusk Diver. What's neat is that each activity feeds back into the combat in one way or another. Whether it's skill points, money, or costumes, no matter how you find yourself spending your time, you're always getting stronger. Dusk Diver has a great cel shaded look and some slick animations. However, the more you play it, the more its budget starts to show. NPCs are little more than faceless character models close up and colored silhouettes from afar. There are a fair amount of different enemy types, but each iteration doesn't get that much more elaborate than the last. The music is a mix of light pop and high energy punk rock. It sets the tone, but is largely forgettable, which is a shame. Great music can always elevate a game, and sadly that just doesn't happen here. While not distracting in a big way, Dusk Diver does have a real sense of jank. There were a number of times where text came up that was clearly not formatted correctly, there were some texture pop-in issues, and a number of things just felt off. Menus aren't as snappy as you'd like them to be, and transitions between certain story moments felt abrupt. While I would have liked for these issues to have been polished out, they don't happen often enough or in big enough ways to detract from the overall experience. I absolutely adore Dusk Diver. 
While a little rough around the edges, I was always excited to dive back into its thrilling combat or take a stroll through the streets of Jimending to find my next distraction. Clocking in at around 9 hours, Dust Diver doesn't overstay its welcome, but there's at least 15 hours of content if you're looking to complete absolutely everything it has to offer. I'm not often surprised this much when it comes to video games, but trust me when I say that Dust Diver is an absolute must play for any action RPG fan. Let me know in the comments what you think of Dusk Diver and if you plan on giving it a try. This has been Taylor for The Gaming Shelf. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.